we want to move to a whole other story on our side, uh, an ongoing story, I have to say, and that is the ongoing protest in the city of Atlanta, Georgia, uh, by those in the area who are outraged at this cop city of $90 million training platform that the Atlanta city government is trying to build there for police in Atlanta and I think around the world would be coming to it. And we are really, really honored to be joined by Kiana Jones, who's a community organizer in Atlanta. Kiana, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. Well, you know, the pleasure is all ours. And of course, I, we're still in the week of action uh, around Cop City. I think people around the country have probably seen something about this at this point, primarily because these domestic terrorism charges that a number of people have been arrested on. But it really does seem like the, the city of Atlanta and the state of Georgia is is willing to go to any length to build this, this Cop City, no matter what it costs yes. the, the people. They do seem intent on building Cop City no matter what, but just as intent as they are in building Cop City, we are intent on standing against it. Cop City represents nothing good for our community. It represents over militarization and repression of the people of the city of Atlanta, Georgia, and the nation to be exact, because when you have something like Cop City, it becomes a model for other locations. You know, Brew, just real quick for, I, you know, I know this is a, a relatively big story uh, in the U.S. right now, particularly on the left and those who care about police reform and police brutality. But could you just very briefly remind our listeners and viewers, what exactly is Cop City and why is it so problematic? So we have named it Cop City because it is a so-called public safety training facility that would not only be a place for law enforcement to train, but also there would be a complex that is dedicated to firefighters and first responders. However, the majority of that complex would be used to build a mock city where urban warfare training would take place, complete with bomb testing facilities. There would even be a landing pad for a Black Hawk helicopter, and there would even be a bar for the cops to go after they've done all of this intensive wow. training. So we have coined the term cop city because it's pretty much a small city for the cops within the city of Atlanta. And it is problematic because first of all, the place that they decided to place this so-called training facility is in one of the blackest neighborhoods in the city of Atlanta that was underrepresented and underfunded for a very long time. This particular part of the city of Atlanta also lies within the unincorporated DeKalb County. So that is another issue as far as jurisdiction. What right does the city of Atlanta even have to build this in a place where there was a deed to the the county of DeKalb that said that that particular tract of land should be for the people of DeKalb County for public land in perpetuity. There's actually a lawsuit going on surrounding the South River watershed, which is also located there, and the Entrenchment Creek. There was a stop work order put in place, and the city of Atlanta allowed APF to go ahead with building anyways. So we have quite a few issues going on surrounding this supposed public training facility, but none of them have good implications for the community there. Well, I'm really glad you brought up the Atlanta Police Foundation. And I think, you know, in every city in America, these police foundations don't get a lot of focus on them. And I was hoping you could talk a little bit more about their role and some of the corporations that are involved, because I think it puts, you know, an interesting angle on, on what's happening with this development. When people understand that the corporations who support the Atlanta Police Foundations are doing a, level, a lot of double talk. They will donate to initiatives that are supposedly in favor of diversity, equity, and inclusion. But then on the back end, they join APF. And these corporations include Home Depot, the Atlanta Hawks Foundation, Chick-fil-A, the Waffle House, Delta, mm. Georgia Pacific. Wow. There's even a professor at Georgia State University, who is a member of the Atlanta Police Foundation. And then you also have Invest Atlanta, where Mayor Andre Dickens is the chair of the board. And Invest Atlanta is a government entity mm. of the city of Atlanta, whose mission statement says that it's their goal to increase economic opportunity for all Atlantans and to foster economic equity. 
something like Cop City would do the exact opposite of what that mission statement says. So when we think about the Atlanta Police Foundation and we think about what they're doing with building Cop City and we look at the money behind them, we have to begin to take a look at how we spend our money and decide that we are not going to fund our own oppression. Well said. And of course, there has been a lot of pushback against uh, Cop City, uh, as you all have named it, uh, including protests. And we see that uh, something like 35 activists uh, have actually been arrested for mm -hmm. opposing Cop City. One of them mm -hmm. includes a legal observer. And yes. of course, the craziest part is they're being charged with some of them are being charged with domestic terrorism. Can you talk a bit about the pushback in the community and then, of course, the police response? Yes, I definitely believe that charging protesters with domestic terrorism, number one, I think is very telling of the posture of not only the mayor of the city of Atlanta, but also the Atlanta Police Foundation and these law enforcement agencies that have come together as a part of the task force that surrounds Cop City. You have representatives from the Atlanta Police Department, Georgia State Police, the GBI, Georgia State Troopers. You have everyone except for MARTA Police involved in staking out, we say, mm -hmm. the area where Cop City is looking to be built. and charging protesters with domestic terrorism is a really dangerous thing because when you talk about something like terrorism the word terrorist invokes in your mind people like osama bin laden who had a mission to literally destroy democracy in the united states when you say terrorism you think about al-qaeda you don't think about people on the street holding a sign mm. being charged with terrorism simply because we have decided to disagree with the powers that be i think this sets a very dangerous precedent because now you are stifling democracy you are not only infringing upon people's first amendment rights to speak out but you're also saying that if i disagree with you then there's an issue and i'm gonna lock you up that is reminiscent of governments that the united states has historically fought against that is reminiscent of the types of things the types of oppression that the united states has historically claimed to stand against. So when you begin to do this to your own citizens, simply because they disagree with something that you have decided to do, you are telling the citizens that you represent that you truly don't care about their voices and that you are not a representative of their idea of democracy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, some of the things that we've seen, I, I saw that you know they sent a SWAT team to break up people handing out flyers. I mean, it really does seem that so much of this is <laughs> Or maybe just even in a deeper sense, I mean, it feels that that Atlanta, that Georgia is becoming such a ground zero around this issue of democracy, around the right to vote. I mean, I remember, I can't remember exactly who it was, but the state representative who was arrested for just trying to, you know, stand up when Governor Kemp was signing in the bill for these, you know, laws to take away people's right to vote. I mean, this really does feel part and parcel in a way. And I think the point you're making is very true about, you know, what can happen around the rest of the country, that a lot of the things happening right now in Atlanta and in Georgia since on Atlanta really do seem to be ground zero in a conversation of A, what is democracy, and B, whether or not we're going to have it in the U.S. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is the sentiment among people who have decided to speak out against Cop City and to stand. And what the city of Atlanta needs to understand, what the state of Georgia needs to understand, what anyone around the world needs to understand is that people are not going to sit idly by and let you do them dirty. People are not going to sit idly by and say, hey, take away my green space. Take away this park where my family and I go biking. Take away the watershed that's an important resource in my community and intricate to the water system here. Hey, take away my clean air and test bombs down the street from my child's school. There are two schools right near the location where they are proposing to build Cop City. What do you think children will think and how will they feel when they hear the bombs being tested? What are they going to think when the Black Hawk helicopters are landing and it's so close to where they're having PE? Mm -hmm. What are they going to think when they hear the gunfire 
from practicing of urban warfare. That's not something that we want our children exposed to. But I think that what Cop City shows more than anything is the relationship between the haves and the have nots. Because we know here in the city of Atlanta that Cop City has become the compromise for the fact that the city of Atlanta would not allow Buckhead to secede from Atlanta. So that silent agreement that's been maintained for so long between the infrastructure of government and the so-called black elite here in Atlanta is being perpetuated by Cop City because East Atlanta, right where they are proposing to build the facility, right behind my house, right mm. down the street from my grandmother's house, um, that neighborhood was a black community that is now being galvanized by gentrification. And that end of East Atlanta where Cop City is proposing to be built is not quite there where the rest of East Atlanta Village is. So there are still quite a few black families there. But if gentrification continues and Cop City is built, then those families are gonna be pushed out. But then in the 20 to 30 year cycle of gentrification, we know that black families will be right back in that community in 20 to 30 years. So Cop City is the answer for those families that when they get there, they better stay right there because Buckhead is off limits. Mm. Black families, poor families, any undesirables are not welcome in Buckhead and Cop City is being put there to make sure that they don't get there. I'm curious, uh, given the amount of pushback and the amount of opposition there is in Atlanta among just the various communities who are going to be affected, is there any opposition coming from local representation? I mean, obviously the mayor has a position, but what about like, are there local city councils, um, just local politicians, local leaders uh, who are taking the side of the community on this? Everyone seems to be afraid except Liliana Bakhtiari, who is the city council member that represents that district where they want to build Cop City. Not only has she been silenced to a degree, but she has brought forth some very pertinent questions. She has asked for answers for the community. She's not gotten them. She has also stood up and at one point even introduced a resolution against it. But of course, it failed because she does not have the support of other city council members. There are some other city council members who just won't take a position because it was introduced before they got into office. They are still finding their way. They are new and they are quite frankly torn between do I stand up for this community or do I follow my political ambitions and make sure that I can stay in good standing with these people who can advance my political career. Right now, what I see is a lot of political posturing and people just going along to get along, not wanting to stand for the people because they know that they are truly not of the people. And I think that this in and of itself should be a wake up call to the city of Atlanta for the people who they elect to represent them when they think about what's going to be good for them and for their families. Look at the faces of these people who won't stand up for you against police repression. The faces of people who won't stand up to stand up for you against environmental injustice, because that's what the building of this facility is environmental injustice. When you look at those people, remember their names, remember their faces and don't ever vote for them again. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, one of the things that I think a lot of folks are, are wondering around the country, maybe probably around the world, too, is, is what they can do to help, to assist, to, to raise the alarm, because obviously I think. You know, similar to so many things we've seen from Standing Rock to Ferguson to, to, to you know, Minneapolis, we know that it's not just the one city. Absolutely. Like I said before, these things become models for the rest of the nation and then the rest of the world. So wherever you are, if you want to help in the fight to stop Cop City, you can definitely follow the hashtag Stop Cop City. You can follow Defend the Atlanta Forest on the website that is defendtheatlantaforest.org. There is a media toolkit where you can begin to post on social media. It has a lot of facts, a lot of information. There is even the lawsuit that has been filed in relation to this case so that people can better inform themselves. I would encourage people to go to communitymovementbuilders.com. 
on their page also is a lot of information about Cop City and people can understand better why we say that this is over militarization and repression of black communities here in Georgia. What I would also encourage people to do is to be mindful and be watchful in their own communities. Pay attention to what's going on in your local city council, at your local county board of commissioners, even at your school board, because many of these things start at levels that low. Pay attention to what's going on. Be informed and be civically engaged. Get your neighbors involved. And most of all, don't be afraid to use your voice to speak up. Community voice is so important and democracy would not work if we didn't have community voice. Don't let anyone silence you. Always stand up for your community and always fight for what you know is right. Right on. Kiana Jones, community organizer in the city of Atlanta, Georgia. Thanks so much for joining us here on the Freedom Side. Thank you.